Thank you, Council President Hucker, Council Vice President Albernaz, and all of our colleagues for your work through this budget review process and for all of your contributions to the proposed budget before us. These are extremely challenging times and this fiscal year 22 budget will address critical needs in our community. I'm proud to have advocated for and supported amendments to this budget that will increase social safety net services provided by county government and by our nonprofit partners support for developmental disability service providers, and much needed resources for mental health services, emergency care, and so many other top priorities. This budget fully funds our school system in an absolutely crucial moment as we are confronted with the increased disparities and social emotional impacts of this pandemic, and are fully committed to working with the Board of Education and MCPS leadership for a full return to in-person instruction. The budget holds the line on property taxes at a time when many individuals and families continue to face financial difficulty and uncertainty. And it does so with an improved property tax structure we proposed last fall together and that county voters overwhelmingly supported on their ballots that will allow us to take full advantage of economic growth without raising tax rates. Despite challenges and a tight capital budget, Changes we've made will accelerate transportation infrastructure that will support modern transit oriented and vibrant communities and lay a foundation for future economic growth. But despite the good in this budget, and there is plenty of it, I remain very concerned about our ability to afford it beyond this year. The budget we are about to approve meets most of the crucial, crucial needs we face today, but it may very well inhibit our ability to meet the moments that follow. It avoids many of the tough fiscal decisions that will only get more challenging the longer we wait to address them. I recognize how difficult it would have been to dismantle a budget recommended by the county executive that violates many of our established fiscal policies and to dramatically scale back many of the public promises that were already made. But this budget is balanced on an unprecedented influx of federal aid that isn't likely to be funded again. It funds programs, positions, and compensation increases that will be asked and expected to continue in future years without the benefit of another round of hundreds of millions of dollars in federal relief. It diverts $15.5 million away from a capital budget that is already stretched and grows tax-supported county spending at more than five times the rate of actual tax revenues expected to support it. It's important to note that the budget that is only balanced for one year isn't structurally balanced at all. Despite those serious reservations, there was only one budget before us today. To vote against this would be to vote against too many positive programs and priorities we all share that are funded in it. Ultimately, this may not have been the budget I would have crafted, but this isn't a body of one, it's a body of nine. And so I cast my vote earlier today, the straw vote, and will cast my formal vote next week in support. We began this budget process by updating and recommitting to our fiscal policies to protect the long-term fiscal health and sustainability of Montgomery County. And I truly appreciate all of the hard work so many colleagues have put into crafting those policies, especially my colleagues on the Government Operations and Fiscal Policy Committee, Chair Navarro and Councilmember Katz. After approving this budget, it will be more imperative than ever that we work to implement these fiscal policies and continue that work to reform our budget processes and address the financial health and sustainability of county government. So we can fund the services urgently needed by so many in our community and to reach our broader quality of life, racial equity, environmental and economic development goals. These challenges aren't going away and neither are the needs. In fact, they are both mounting. I know we all recognize that and the longer we wait, the harder and more painful those choices will be. Thank you again to council colleagues and thank you to the residents, nonprofit leaders and business leaders who provided their input on this fiscal year 22 budget. Thank you also to our central staff for your hard work and all of your tireless efforts. And to my office staff, Cindy, Aaron, Matt, Angela and Eric for your terrific work in a year that has presented unprecedented challenges. With appreciation to my colleagues and looking ahead to much work that we have before us, I yield back to you, Mr. President. 